First up is 3,000 Years of Longing, which is the latest film from George Miller. And yes, that is the same George Miller who is responsible for Mad Max. It's also the same George Miller who is responsible for Babe and Happy Feet. So, you know, he's a man with many facets. And all I knew about it going in is that it had Tilda Swinton and Idris Elba and that it was from George Miller. And at the time, I thought, you know what? That's enough for me. I hope. I mean, I hope I enjoy every film I go see because hours of my life I don't get back. But unfortunately, in this scenario, it just wasn't quite enough for me. And I had kind of avoided seeing the plot constraints, except whatever the premise of it was, because I thought maybe it'd be better going in that way. Also, there'd been a lot of buzz about it. And I was like, I just don't want to know. I just want to enjoy it. I now wish I had had a little more context for it going in. So I will give that to you in that the story centers around Tilda Swinton's character, who's this academic who, you know, is just living her life. She is, is resigned to, you know, for lack of a better word, singledom, and then comes across a magic lamp and, you know, releases a djinn who's played by Idris Elba. I don't think I was surprised when that happened on screen, but I was just like, oh, okay, this is where we're going with it. And then the story unfolds through a lot of storytelling, like inside the story storytelling, which can sometimes be great. In this case, I struggled a little bit with it because a lot of this story has to do with great loves and romances and relationships and all of those things. And you know, I felt like some of them had that uh, displayed on screen with the characters and the chemistry and some of them not so much. And the ones that were not so much were the ones that I needed to invest in. I'm trying to talk about this without giving like too much of it away, but I just wish there had been more romantic chemistry between the scenarios that called for and, and tried to ask us to believe in romantic chemistry. So, you know, when that doesn't work, or it's not that it doesn't work, but it doesn't work as well as it should. And that is the big driving force behind the film. It's never going to be as good as it can be. And I think, you know, both Idris and Tilda and all the other actors involved, I think they're good actors on their own. There was just something about the way that the like interplay between them didn't work for me. And maybe I also acknowledge there's a world, you know, if I'd watch this thing, I'd be like, oh, it was intentional because, you know, there are imbalances in these moments. It's actually trying to demonstrate how you can't force this and that and all that stuff. But but then there are moments that sort of undermine that. So I'm like, no, I think it just didn't read for me personally. There's certainly a world in which other audiences might be able to invest in that part of it better than I was able to, but it, it was sort of a detractor for me. And also, uh, it's not minor, and I don't want to undersell this, but I do get frustrated when we see a movie like this that uh, certainly objectifies characters. And in this case, it's it's mostly female characters. And so we see, you know, some nudity. And that's I don't have any problem with nudity. But I'm like, let me see everybody then, you know, like, let's let's have this be an equal opportunity. It's 2022. If we're we're saying like these people are gorgeous and these people are gorgeous and they're an object of desire, blah, blah, blah. Like, let's let's make it even here. You know, I, it's, I don't think it's only fair to see basically the female uh, presenting form in movies like this at this point, if you're going to be like, oh, we're going to show all the things. I have the same criticism of it. Well, <laughs> thinking of something like House of Dragons recently, which if you'd watched the first episode, it's like, maybe I don't want to see anybody's anything in the circumstance I saw it. But anyway, a slightly minor note, but the fact that I was like focusing on that instead of some of the story elements, I think to me spoke to how it didn't quite hit home in the way that it should have. And then there were, there were some fun premise moments with it that I was like, oh, I kind of wish you'd explore that more. But it kind of glossed over in favor of trying to, you know, get the stories that it was trying to tell uh, out the legends essentially out in, in, you know, the same format, all these things. So it didn't quite work for me. I think part of it was that I wanted it to be this, you know, because of everyone involved, maybe I had higher expectations for it than it deserved. But I honestly think like, you know, uh, it it just it did it. Oh, it could. There's a there's a universe in which it could have worked. And I do, I, I will also give credit, I do like the way that it handles the whole like three wishes premise. Y you know, we see that a lot in Wishing for More Wishes. And also, again, I'm just referencing a bunch of pop culture right now. But if anyone has been watching this season of What We Do in the Shadows, I love what they're doing with the gin there. But I like some of the stuff about it, but it just was not enough as a cohesive whole. It was not enough to satisfy this itch that it was getting close to scratching, but it didn't quite get there. And so it left you with, ironically, even more longing. So I'm going to give it 3.3 .3 out of 5. The next film I have is a movie called Breaking, which was titled something else at the time that I saw it. Uh, I saw it during Sundance, but it stars John Boyega, Nicole Bahari, Selena Levia, Michael Kenneth Williams, Connie Britton, and Jeffrey Donovan. And it's based on a true story about a Marine veteran who basically holds up a bank 
But his reasons for doing it, I, I've got to say, I mean, there's no good reason to commit a crime, but I also think his motivations are understandable to anyone who has dealt with bureaucracy at any point and frustration and has just felt justified in being like, oh, I am doing everything right. The system is designed against me. So from that standpoint, the film is very successful in being very frustrating. And I give John Boyega so much credit. I think he gives a spectacular performance in this. You know, uh, I, I thought he was not unrecognizable, but it's certainly a, a good dramatic role for him to be in. I think the challenge with the film is that because the circumstances are so not strange per se, but they are heightened, but they're simultaneously not heightened. Like you can feel that it's a very constrained film. There are times where the drama and also the pacing of the drama doesn't read as well as I would have liked it to, or I saw it having the potential to read, you know, and, and expand upon. Again, it's a very frustrating exercise in viewership. And some of that is the success of the movie, right? Where it's like, this is the message that it's trying to get across. It is trying to help us understand what this character was going through and what their motivations were. And, you know, that there are two sides to every story. But again, it is just so frustrating watching them have to experience that. So, you know, it's not like a fun movie to sit through. And it's it's always hard to recommend this type of film to be like, yeah, do you want to suffer for like two hours? Think about seeing Breaking. But if you want to suffer for two hours and, and you're not going to suffer, suffer. But, you know, if you if you want to experience a slow paced, it's kind of like being on hold for a customer service call and you're just getting angrier and angrier and angrier, but you're getting angrier on behalf of this character who has been wronged, essentially. That's that's the type of vibe you get through the film. And then, you know, there are stakes because it's happening in semi real time in the, within the constraints of the film and all that stuff. So again, I, I recommend it within reason where I'm like, oh, it's a decent movie for what it's trying to do, but I don't know if what it's trying to do is enjoyable. And also, you know, I also think there are moments where they could have pushed certain things that could have really elevated it. But again, for what it is, pretty decent. So I'm going to give it a 3.5 out of 5. And then the last film I have this week is called Funny Pages. And I really struggled with this one because similar to breaking there are things it does very very well and that feel accurate or realistic or whatever i just don't like the things that it did i feel like the uh entitlement of the filmmakers is showing in this movie and I, when i watched it i did not know who made it per se i just was like i i can tell watching this movie that it was a white man who made this film and that's not to say that white men aren't allowed to make films but there are just so many things in it there are so many hyper specific things in this movie that i'm like okay I kind of I know the characters, you know, these are slightly hyperbolic versions of the characters that you are presenting, but I, I know them. I've met them. Um, also, the premise of it is basically it's a sort of coming of age story of a teenage character who not character, a teenage boy who is, you know, obsessed with becoming a cartoonist or a comic writer or whatever, but not like I want to work for Marvel, whatever. He wants to do sort of niche uh, adult, uh, you know, off kilter underground comics. And I. It's some of me related to that character because as someone who went to art school and, you know, got very obsessed with things, I was like, yeah, I get it. You know, you, you get blinders on a little bit, but some of the decisions this character makes are so just only a white male character could make this and survive a movie, right? Like if a person of color made these decisions, if a woman made some of these decisions, they'd be dead. This would be a horror movie. And so, you know, for me, that created a slight barrier to it and that's not to say that you know I can't connect to these stories there are plenty of things about them I can connect to I just also thought the storytelling and the acting in this one made it harder for me to connect to so you know it, there's a world in which this could have been it, it's being compared to things like crumb and American splendor and yeah I think this is a, a you know freshman attempt at trying to live in those worlds but those are films that I really did relate to and I was like oh yeah you know, or related to aspects of them. I was like, yes, you can, the, the artistry and the storytelling here is uh, specific, but it is also accessible and there's not like a barrier to it. Whereas this, I think some of the uh, novice nature of it made it uh, just a little too far in the like, this is for me world. And, you know, I, I think this will resonate with some audiences. I just am not one of the people who throughout the whole course of it resonated. And therefore I'm like, meh. 
Uh, also, it's ironic because I just made this comment about 3,000 years of longing, but this is imbalanced in the other direction of I don't need to see this much male genitalia in the way it's being presented because I don't feel like it's furthering the story. I think it's more being like, haha, here's a penis. Also, then finally, after I, you know, watched the movie, I was like, who made this again? Like, it can't be, they can't be that old. But, and I looked and the uh, director and writer is Owen Klein, who turns out is the son of Kevin Klein and Phoebe Cates. So there's a little bit of nepotism at play. He was also an actor. He was in The Squid and the Whale. But yeah, I, you know, I was like, oh, your privilege is definitely showing in some of the choices that this character makes. A again, going back to the, like, just the settings and the engaging in, with other characters, all things like that. You know, I, I don't think it's a terrible movie, but I also just, it, it's not good enough for me to be like, yes, I'm going to really recommend this to folks. And even the people who I know sort of operate in um, or have appreciation for comics, the co old school comics, I, I don't even know if it's necessarily for them just because of some of the the crude nature of some of the things. Even the people who embrace the uh, the you know, saucier stuff. Just the way Funny Pages handles it, like, didn't quite sit right for me. So I'm going to give it a 2.8 out of 5. 